Okay, welcome. Welcome to lovely Zlata. Happy land from fairy tale and modern workers paradise. Who does not relish the chance to visit our so happy land? Yes, come for our remarkable shoppings. Slacker is a truly modern Marxist state and really a streetwalker's paradise. Why not enjoy our famous foods and eat a typical meal beneath a barred field tree? Come and drink the medicinal waters in our pots. Of course, in Slacker we admit that not everything is perfect yet. But here we have a saying. In Slaka there is always a saying, never a doing. You cannot build socialism in a day or produce a baby in a week. How lucky we have brave leaders who have the courage to try. <laughs> cameras are here. You know that we are a small country, a fly sheet on the map of the world. <laughs> Nobody knows who we are, not even us. Always we are oppressed. But we have some heroes, yes! <laughs> of 1848. 
reciting his long poems in the battle. My dears, we are free. Volkani <laughs> is gone. Prorat lives. And we will recite his poems and sing his songs again. We will make a nice revolution. My friends. Oh, Mr. Tonkic, remember him? Old Politburo. Oh. No, no. No, not anymore. I was a prisoner like anyone else. No, my friends, I think we see here our new president. Da. No politics, only imagination. <laughs> I would have slacker in a mess in weeks. Oh, Madame Princip, you refuse. No, no, I accept. Foreign office, Hilda, back there on the left. London. I don't know why we came back. Oh, it was perfectly nice when we left. Now look at it. Rubbish everywhere. It's worse than Brussels. We left Brussels because you said it was worse than London. Actually, you didn't, Michael. You got out so you could come home to Britain and get your care. Oh, don't imagine they'll give me a knighthood. Not after 20 years in Brussels. When I die, you'll see, the Times obituary will simply say, he went to Europe and betrayed his country. Well, you're not just going to take it lying down. Most people take their obituaries lying down. Yeah. Uh, tell them you want a promotion. I'm tired of being the only person at a dinner party whose husband is without a title. Well, we could always dine somewhere else. There isn't anywhere else. You're the only one, Michael. Let's look at you. Tie straight, nose clean. I think so, Hilda. Right, in you go. And don't fumble the secretaries, will you? No, Hilda. How good of you to take time from your busy desk to hear your new deputy president. You know, we in Berlaymont are sometimes called faceless bureaucrats. What a pleasure for me to look round and see so many fine faces here. <laughs> Madam Commissioner, excuse me. I had already begun. So sorry, Monsieur Villeneuve. They tell us we are unelected officials. Very well. When I hear that, I think of our great European cathedrals. Chartres, Rouen, Notre Dame de Paris. All French, of course. To build a great vision, 
You choose only the best that we have done in Berlin. Bravo. Maximus on to destiny. It is sometimes said in every Frenchman, there is somewhere a little Napoleon. <laughs> and why not? Don't we live again in a great age of destiny? Once more, the star of Europe rises. The spirit of fortune beckons. The door to the east swings open. Mes amis, mes chers amis, I love Europe like mistress. Now, come super Europe. Soon, we will be not 12, but 15, 20, 30. Did you say something, Madam Commissioner? Uh, I said if 12 was enough for Jesus at the Last Supper, surely 12 should be enough for us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, How kind of you to come, Madam Commissioner. I'm not sure, Jean-Luc, that all these initiatives have ever been discussed by the Commission. What is this approach from Slaka, for example? Oh, Mr. Parson just mentioned it, yes, Mr. Parson? Well, mentioned it, yes. But in this world of modern absurdity, I think meaning is always something to Slaka is an independent matter, Signora Melchiori. Mm. It doesn't concern the commission at the moment. Sir Parson, my office now. Your office? No. There are certain concerns we should not burden our busy commissioners with, especially when their agricultural budgets are in such disarray. <laughs> you will excuse us? Avec plaisir, Jean-Luc. <laughs> That charmant as ever, Madam mm. Commissioner. <laughs> Why don't I understand the map of Europe anymore? I suppose because they keep changing the bloody thing every day, that's why. Give me the Cold War. At least we knew where we were and where the other bastards were, too. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Well, I've looked all over the Balkans and I can't seem to find it. Yes, but I want to know everything about these people. What they make, what they do. Not very much, apparently. Their only natural resource is tin, their only export is beetroot. It's uh, very convenient, of course. It is. Well, one fits so neatly into the other. Oh, I see. Now, where is this bloody country? Oh, 1914. Ah, there it is. Not very big, is it? Hey, what lucky it's there at all. They're one of those countries that specialize in being invaded. They've all been there. Attila the Hun, Suleiman the Magnificent, Boris the Short, Maggie the Fair. They all got out with their pockets empty and their trousers missing. You seem to know a lot about it. Well, I know a chap called Steadyman in our embassy there. He says the Slarkins are a right lot of buggers. Uh, would that worry you, Spearpoint? It wouldn't me. Oh, no, not that kind of bugger, the other kind of bugger. They bug your office, bug your car, bug your phone, bug your flat. If you have a bike, they bug that too. All embassy debriefings have to be held in the ambassador's bathroom while his wife sits on the loo and keeps flushing it. Well, they have just had a revolution, you know. Yes, I do know. They've just appointed the local Barbara Cartland as president. Not that I should think that'll make any difference, damn devious people, the Slarkins. I say, does this have anything to do with me? Well, you're our expert on the bloody Belgian Empire, aren't you? I beg your pardon. Uh, the bloody Belgian Empire is what we call the European community here. Yeah, you um, joined us from Brussels, didn't you? Yes. I spent 20 years of my bureaucratic career in Brussels until... Until you saw sense. Until I realized I could probably be of greater service to my own country. Yes, well, they all come back in the end, don't they? Collect their Ks, you see. Now, tell me, do you think that the EC would admit Slarker into the community? <laughs> no, not a hope. They wouldn't even look at them. Slarker would drain the whole thing dry in a week. Are you sure about that? Absolutely. Oh. Tell the PM. Pity he was rather for it. Was he? Well, I think he'd like them to drain the whole thing dry in a week. Now, just a minute. By the way, Spearpoint, I forgot to say. Welcome to the Foreign Office. Oh. Thank you, Minister. 
Monsieur Villeneuve, the member states would never agree. Slaka has no democracy, no economy. The inflation is appalling. Their government is mismanaged. The industry has collapsed. No one would admit them like that. <laughs> they admitted Britain like that. Really? Here is a people who, as Kierkegaard has said, have seen the darkness, but not yet found the light. My dear fellow, then think of the opportunity. Here is a country where everything is yet to be done, but a chance to prove the power of the free market. Entre nous. The French want them also the German? They do. Why? <laughs> because they share my vision of a great new Europe. Because Slaka was once in their sphere of influence. Because they don't want it to get into the hands of the British. It would need massive aid. First, you would need to convince the commissioners. Then, the European Parliament. <laughs> Those people. They will do nothing. That is why they are easiest. To do nothing but bang their desks and think about their little Euro jollies. Now, we must act ourselves. That is why we need coffee. Uh, no, thank you. I don't take it. Uh, my stomach. <laughs> An acronym, Parson. Coffee. C O F F. Uh, uh, community operation freeing fund for Eastern Europe. I'm afraid I've never heard of it. Of course not. It is a special aid fund I have set up myself for just such a venture. The Americans are in, the Japanese, the World Bank, Eurofed, who would administer? <laughs> With your usual astuteness, you have seen the problem exactly. Here is a great adventure. But who has the wisdom and discretion to steer it? Who can gain trust everywhere? The banks of the West, the government of Slaka, I can't think of no one in Berlaymont who, uh... In Berlaymont. <laughs> of course not. We need someone independent. Someone who has worked with all the aid agencies. And rack my brains as I will, I can think of only one man. Dr. Hans Joachim Dorfman of the World Bank. 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 Yes, that's me. Holding on one moment. Dorfman? Uh, by the way, Spare Parts, I gave the PM your advice on Slarka. He was rather for it. To my surprise, actually. Oh, God. And you see, he agrees with you. He thinks that if Slarka were to join the EC, it would shift the center of the community further east, Budapest or somewhere. Then it would be nearly lunchtime before we could fly over and put our spoke in. <laughs> Quite. Unfortunately, your bloody Belgian Empire have bowled us another googly. So you said there's no chance of the EC admitting them in the foreseeable future? Of course, not a chance. Mm. Top of the agenda at the foreign minister's meeting next weekend. What? That's extraordinary. There must have been a complete change of policy. Well, these things happen spare point. We aren't all as steadfast as the British. So, let me understand this. We are now against Slarkin entry. So who's for it? All our traditional enemies, France, Germany, the Department of Trade and Industry. The DTI? Why? Well, they think it's a wonderful opportunity to give a boost to British trade. They've got it wrong, of course. They always do. Slarka joins the EC. Our exports will go down, not up. They will? 
You mean we are exporting there already? What? Well, what is the only British export that's any good? Needs no workers, no workforce. No assembly, no assembly lines. Impervious to strikes will not spoil in the rain. The one export everyone wants, wherever they live, whatever they do. Never goes wrong, never breaks down. The one export that makes us a world power, the one export that we cannot let Europe undermine. I don't know. What? I'll tell you over lunch. Uh, bottle of number 11, please, George. Thank you. What was I saying, Spearpoint? You were explaining about our most successful export. What is it? Oh, yes. Ethel, of course. Ethel? You mean awful? No, E-F-L. English as a foreign language. Mainstay of British foreign policy. The one thing from which everything else follows. It does? Oh. Well, English is the first world language, right? How do we retain our power? Well, it's easy, really. Get them young with Janet and John go to the zoo. The next thing you know, they're buying their knickers from Knickerbox and their guns from Vickers. <laughs> uh, uh, but what difference will that make if Slarker joins the EC? What difference? Language is the biggest war game in the book. Let the Europeans into Slarko and we lose our tea time. Tea time? The TEA, Teaching English Abroad. Tea time? Teaching English Abroad to incorporate Middle Europe. Oh. And uh, if Slarko joins the EC... Oh, well, we knock out tea time and replace it with some bloody silly Brussels acronym. Oh, of course. The Lingua program. What does that stand for? Lingua? I think just Lingua. I'll tell you what it stands for. Down with the gin, up with the schnapps. Down with Rover, up with Renner. Uh, let Lingua in, and then what would the British public have to say? What? Well, Europe abolishes tea time. Brussels takes away English tea. <laughs> Doesn't really bear thinking about. Undoubted political dynamite, Minister. Worse than getting rid of the pound for the bloody ecu. They keep saying there's a European train just about to leave the platform. The trouble is, if we don't do something about it, it's going to reach the station at the other end. If I might make a suggestion. Oh, do, do. It might be possible. Well, uh, not to derail this particular train, but to uh, send it into a side. It shouldn't be hard to delay the entry of Slaka by several years if we just sow some confusion in Burlymore. Well... The foreign ministers meet when? Uh, next weekend. Well, why not send me out a day or two ahead? I do have some well-placed contacts in Brussels, and I, I do know my way around. Mm, it could be a great opportunity for you. Yes. Well, I realize that. So, um, if the PM could be kept informed... It might make a great difference to your future. Well, why not? around the corner. I'm trying to make my mark here. I told you, there's nowhere to park in London except a yard at Buckingham Palace. Oh, let's go. Did they say anything about the cave? Not exactly. They're sending me on a special mission. Wonderful. Where to? Brussels. Brussels? Yes, Hilda, you remember it, the capital of Belgium. Oh, I remember it. And I remember that floozy, the Italian commissioner for agriculture you couldn't keep your hands off. I suppose this is just an excuse to see her again. Not at all, Hilda. My job is to undermine the Commission proposals. Even if we did meet, we'd be on totally opposite sides. Opposite sides? Well, just make sure you stay there. I'm sure you're... All but I've gone to enormous trouble to arrange this so that we can... Well, all right then, why don't we... Excuse me. Oh, my God. No. No. <laughs> it's nothing. Arrivederci.
Bloody daughter. This really isn't necessary, old chap. F.O. You're telling me to F.O., monsieur? No, no, not you, F.O. Me, F.O. British Foreign Office. We saved you in the war, remember? I don't remember the war. You're taking the vacances for No, diplomatic business. From Duns, monsieur. Her Majesty's government requires us to carry them everywhere these days. To keep the rain off the golf clubs. All right. Mm. Un moment, monsieur. Un moment. Me. Ah, that's it. You stop me, you let him through. You're just from Britain. He's well back. Merci, monsieur. The next time they march through gallant little Belgium, don't expect us to come and save you. Director, how nice to see you. No, not director anymore, Dorfman. Autre temps, autre mer, as they say in Europe. But what about you? I thought you were with the World Bank. Oh, I am. I'm working on population control in India. I just flew into Brussels for a top level hush hush my eyes only overnight consultation. Oops. It wouldn't have anything to do with Slarka, would it? I don't know what makes you think that. You know, it is awfully nice to see you, Dorfman. Is it? You never said that before. Oh, come on. You remember how well we got on together when I was your director, considering how inefficient you were? Uh, are, you, are you going into Berlin? Or I've got a higher car somewhere. I can take you. In fact, I think I'm being met. No, no, no. no that was from me, Dorfman. Me. You know, this is the most extraordinary coincidence. I saw you and I thought, it's bloody Dorfman. How very kind of you. Isn't it? How's the delightful Madam Spearpoint? She's alive and well and complaining in London. I hope. Well, off to Berlimont. Well, not exactly Berlimont. Uh, that very expensive restaurant, La Brouette en Grand Place, maybe you know it. I believe I have seen it, yes. You really have found the gravy train again, haven't you, Dorfman? Well, come on, what's a little deviation between friends? Credo, I'm sure I can Dorfman, arrivati. You told him nothing. I told him an overnight consultation. Nothing more. Mm. <sighs> Monsieur Villeneuve, mm. these prices, have you seen them? <laughs> Just for eating and drinking. <laughs> My dear fellow, <laughs> don't worry. Europe will pay. We can raise V80 if we have to. Remember, we are about from a major negotiation. Here is a man flying all the way from Bombay to meet you. He thinks you want his advice on slacken watercress production. In fact, he wants him to change his life, his job, maybe even his mistress. You must tease and allure him, delight, and defer him, wine him, and dine him. Oh, Mr. Hoffman, allow me to greet him. You won't expect to see me. Well, is it you, my dear Dorfman? Director General. No, no, my dear fellow. Deputy President. <laughs> I've done well. Oui? And you too, I think. Look at you. Two years older, five years wiser. <laughs> Travel has suited you. You think so? <laughs> yes. How nice to see you. And we both have so much in common. We do? Yes. We have both been blamed for crimes we didn't commit. <laughs> and what we did for the great good of Europe. <laughs> Mr. Vinyas, do you know um, Mr. Larson Parson? You're meeting him. Mr. Parson, in person. <laughs> yes, I arranged everything. <laughs> sit down, please. <laughs> Parson, sit down. <laughs> ah, well, well, well. Champagne? Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> garçon, garçon, champagne. 
for the gentleman. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Dolphin. <laughs> What happened to us, Gianna? You know what happened, Michael. You went back to London and the awful Hilda. I did not go back to my awful Hilda. My awful Hilda came back to me. There is a difference, you know. To me, it's the same. Well, what do you think there is between Hilda and me? It's just economic and monetary union. Really, it's certainly not total integration. I don't care anymore, Michael. I'm a commissioner. I like to be respectable, and I don't want any more a man in my life, especially one with grey hair, a marriage, and middle age. You mean me? Of course you, Michael. So, don't be sentimental. There is no time for sex in the new Europe. And it won't last very long, will it? Probably not. Especially now that Villeneuve is deputy president. Have you heard about that? Yes. How does Barrymont do it? That man nearly went to prison for fraud. Oh, don't you know? When a French official is charged with corruption, everyone thinks maybe he's good at his job. And when the charges are dropped, they think maybe he's very good at his job. Let's give him a better one. Now he can do what he likes, change policy, pour all my budget down the Balkan drain. You don't mean the Slarkan drain. Of course, Michael. And explain me this, please. There is a country with a bad history, a terrible economy. Nobody even knows where it is. But what is in it for Villeneuve? Well, if you really want to know, my dear, I might be able to help you. You, Michael? How and why? Because, my dear, I'd do anything for you. Because I want us to work together again. I know what you mean. I told you. No. You don't want to know who I met at the airport? At the airport, hmm, Henry Kissinger, Hans Dietrich Genscher. Close, Hans Joachim Dorfmann. No, not the Dorfmann who invented glasnos with plums. Mm -hmm. The Dorfmann who talked about Nietzsche all the time. Yes, <sighs> that's the one. And he was carrying a guidebook to Slaka and going to dine at La Bruette with some high EC officials. You know who always goes there? Villeneuve. Yeah, it's interesting, yes. It is interesting, Michael. Good, then shall we go somewhere? I'm going somewhere. Where does Dorfman stay? The Ambassador Hotel. Thank you, Michael. Jana, I thought we were going... Oh, hey, Dorfman. Now is the time for business. Dr. Dorfman, you know Slaka? Ah, yes. City of flowers and gypsy music. Great capital at international crossroads. Who could be ignorant of a child? Uh, ah, you've been there. No, I read the guidebook on the plane. You said, Mr. Parsons, you wanted to consult me. We did not ask you here for advice at all. What, no. But I flew all the way from Bombay for this consultation. We want something more important. Don't talk to us about Slugger. Go there. We want you to open the Eastern Door to pioneer our mission. Here is your ticket. You fly tomorrow morning on Kofiuk. That's the airline. The Minister of Trade awaits you. It's a language. Your tasks, simple yet formidable. You will establish democracy, revive their industry, stabilize their economy, fix their exchange rate, develop the free market, reopen the stock exchange, and make them ready for entry into Europe at a very near date. No, really, please, all this is quite impossible. Difficult, yes. <laughs> Impossible. Never. You will have a wonderful budget. A hundred million dollars. And you will make Slaka the showcase of the Balkans. No. But I don't want it. Nobody consulted me about it. I'm happy with the World Bank. I'm helping poor people there. My dear Ian Dorfman, think. For a year now, across Europe. People have been asking one simple question. Who brought the great change? Who tumbled down the Berlin Wall, opened the East, spread the dream of freedom, 
Of course, some say Gorbachev, some Reagan, some Thatcher. But in Berlin, we know better. Huh? It was Dorfman. Dorfman. And his glass nosed with plums. <laughs> Do you really think so? But it wasn't even my idea. It was. <laughs> of course, it was your idea. And now, from Galway to Tbilisi, they are asking, where is he? The man who did this. Is it really possible that the father who was present at the conception now refused to attend the birth? No, Dorfman! Dorfman, Europe is not perfect. The free market is not perfect. But for billions of people, it is the only hope. And remember, if one man can make it work in Slaka, it can be made to work anywhere. What an opportunity. And what a hero you would be. But I'm sure anybody else could... Of course not. I rack my brains, you know. And I can recall only one man who possessed everything. The idealism and the vision, the compassion and the courage to make this work. You, Dolphin, these people cry out to you. How can you refuse them? That, I think, is what Mr. Parson was really saying with his silver tongue. Commissioner. Dorfman. That is a surprise. One night in Brussels and I meet all my old friends. Oh, but you look very well, my dear. Maybe I'll be told them. You as well, Madam Commissioner. May I get you a drink? Uh, just a coffee, please. One coffee and a brandy. Yeah, monsieur. So, are you still the same, Hans? The same great idealist? Well, I hope so. Trying to do the best for the poorer peoples of the world. Of course, you do learn a few things if you work worldwide for the World Bank. I suppose you've been everywhere by now. Almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. It would be everywhere next. Slack. There is a nice place. Very good peach brandy. And they say the girls are very pretty. Especially after the brandy. <laughs> he sends you there, does he, Monsieur Villeneuve? You just saw him, I think. Oh, you know, I thought there was a secret project. Oh, I know many things. I'm a commissioner, Hans. Difficult project. I know the economy is terrible. Yeah, I checked. It's terrible. Voila. What about the coffee? You know about coffee as well? Coffee? This is what France is called. Coffee? Yeah. Community operation for freeing funds in Eastern Europe. Oh, yes. I forgot. It didn't come to the commissioners. So, these funds, you're sure they're really enough for you? Oh, we yeah. are. I mean, a hundred million dollars, I can do a lot with that. Oh, yes, I think so. At first, I said it's impossible. But then, Monsieur Villeneuve was very persuasive. Yes. You go soon. Yeah, tomorrow. Well, my dear. Good luck and happy visit. And uh, just in case something goes wrong, you can always call me. I don't think that'll be necessary. In Berlemont, I don't meet very often idealists. Uh, excuse me. Oh, so sorry. Voila. Bye. 
Kameradiki Otveni Duslaka. Milieti Pasipoti. I expect it's executive class. No. It does not exist. Uh, um, non smoking, please. <laughs> Forbidden. All right. Um, window? Not possible. The case? Yeah, I'll carry that on. Not permitted. They like to lose everything together. You have not traveled Comfluk before? Well, no. <laughs> Perhaps if I get the seat beside you, I can explain. Do I ask? Yes, that would be a very nice idea. Your boarding passport is, sir. Sleigh Bob. Very keen Comfluk. Have a nice day. Rusi Frali of Frali, Vergin Porto Conflog, Oi, Oi, Versi Poslaka, Capitano Jordic, Loki Rocky, Oclubi Dubi, in the Magnetina, Mastaya Exigene, Chipotle, Colonos Altem Centi, Virti Setti, Nutri, Boni Viaggi, Vergin Conflog. Velki in Bull. Lupi, lupi, ok, noki, roki. Fatensi. Vajo, sitti, pinsiti. Vada, imeg, nicina, hengsta, ivamsta. Slipo. Lista, fasten your seatbelt. Sorry, it's broken. You must fasten, sir. International regulation. Bon. Do you fly Comflug very often? Only since I had Libertad. Before foreign travel was forbid. Unless you were nomenclatura. You do not think I was nomenclatura. You were after Marxist. A Marxist? <laughs> What's a Marxist? Can you find me one? Only in Cuba and the literature departments of British universities. Yeah, but Slaka was Marxist before. My dear sir, don't you know about the turn? Oh, you mean the revolution? No, after the revolution. The turn. The turn is when everyone turned. Before all were Marxists, even if they were not. After no one is a Marxist, even when they are. <laughs> on Friday, they were ex-Marxist. On Saturday, Social Democrats. On Sunday, Christian Conservatives. The human mind is wonderful, don't you think? And what do the people really believe? <laughs> I see. You have not lived in a repression. In Slaka, we have a saying. Never forget the past. You may need it again in the future. You understand? Not exactly. You repeat Marvik? No, Hans Joachim Dorfman. Oh, Galina Vitale. Would you do come from Pete Marvik? Or Prank Slaughter House? Sachi Sachi? Sock shot. <laughs> Knickerbocks. <laughs> None of these. Oh, but these are the people who come to my country now. Why do you come to my country? Oh, it's a rather high-level mission. Oh, McDonald the hamburger. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I'm kind of a diplomat. Oh, you're from the EC, I think. Yes, exactly. Oh, Mr. Market, may I kiss you? Oh, you don't mind me. On conflict, it's different. Atencie Froli of Froliki, Evocanti New York, the Naki Nog in Slakam, Resti and Stuli, Fro the Froliki, Conductari and Invaini, the Bomb of Rugo Vicom. I 
show you coffee? Look, do you like I show you slapper? Yes, I'd like that very much. Of course, I'll have my official hosts. We will get an official version. Don't you want an official one? Yeah, I'm sure that will be very valuable. Valuable. I'm not so good at being formal all the time. So how do I find you? Right in the same? Well, I'm afraid I don't know. I'm looked after by the Ministry of Foreign Trade. Oh, then, of course, Hotel Slacker. They want me to hear? Yes, they do. Oh, yes, so you are safe? I leave you here. I go this way. You go there to the Grand Chief. That's me. Ah, you are a... Dr. Dorfman. Very cheap slacker, Dr. Dorfman. Thank you. You had a good flight, or, or did you come from Yes, I did. Then this way for the taxi. Please, a little tourist. Here, toxins of us lack in kind. There, pollution of us lack in kind. There, the Cathedral of St. Valdopin, not to be missed. On the hill, the castle where lives our president, Katja Prinship. Here, place of the glorious revolution, that is your hotel. Ministrati, Economici, where is your appointment? Sleep out. Eva Tebo. Porco capitalistu. He goes to see Tankage. Very important man. You are lucky he sees you. Sometimes it takes many days. And does he speak English or German? Before the Libertati, only Russian. Now, suddenly he speaks English very well. Uh, what was he before the Libertati? Ah, the same. Minister of Trade with General Vulcani. Of course. Then he only traded with the Russians. They sent us their oil and we sent them our everything else. But still, the new regime kept him on. Yes. Some say, let us shoot him. Others say, ours is a nice revolution. Let us keep him where he is. After all, only he understands the files. Maybe he even knows how the country works. Nobody else does. Dr. Dorfman of Europe. Very. I am Vera. I am the minister's typewriter. I think he's typist. Very well. So, for you, I changed all his appointment. This was very hard work. I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Do you know a perfume, Magriff? Yes, very nice. <laughs> you don't have any? No, I'm sorry. Maybe when you want another appointment, you will have some. Hey, hey! Very <laughs> So, Dr. Dorfman, you have come to make our economic miracle, eh? You brought me the money. What money? Dorfman, for you, we made our revolution. We cut the bonds of our Russian brothers, we turned with joy to the West, and you don't at least bring me a very big check. It doesn't really work like that, Mr. Tankage. I have to examine the problems, assess... Advice. And then you bring me the money, eh? <laughs> come in, come in. Enough of this materialism, man. Eh? Please. Now, it is time uh, for coffee, eh? You see, I know all about coffee. Hello. Oh, Professor Ron Ram of the Slaken Academy of Arts and Sciences. I'm the president's economical advisor. He wrote a very famous book of Marxist economics. Of course, I have told it up since. Never mind, nobody read it anyway. 
I said coffee, but first, something more spiritual. Not with it. Our slack and brandy. Slack and toast. I do not drink. I do not smoke. I do not go with women, except when you are here. <laughs> May you come here very often. <laughs> And tomorrow he will come for you. We will go to the castle. The president longs to meet you. You have a daughter. She's beautiful. And already she's asking for you. To talk on my I'm sorry. <laughs> so, be fresh. Be clever. And my friend, you and I, we will make together the music of capitalism. <laughs> 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 you sing the rough team, huh? No, Grigor. Only we, Rafa. They entertain him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the British Embassy sl Slaka. Steady, uh, steady man speaking. Felix, old chap, it's Michael Spearpoint, your old chum from Charterhouse. That's right, Gummy Spearpoint. You'll never forget, do you? No, I'm now back with the FCO in London. Hang on a minute, I'm just going to act, um, activate a little device so we can't, uh, can't be overheard. All, all set. Right, right, you can speak freely. It's just as the chap coming your way, we'd like you to keep an eye on. Perhaps throw a few hurdles in his path. No, no, nothing too dramatic. We are British, after all. His name is Dorfman. Hans Joachim Dorfman, otherwise known as Bloody Dorfman. All right? Goodbye. <laughs> 